Hi there. Today was supposed to be the happy start of our honeymoon, a trip my husband and I had planned together. But just as we were about to leave, he suddenly tore up my passport. He looked strangely pleased with himself, leaving me confused and furious. I'd never actually planned to travel with him. I always wanted to go with my mom. There were already some tensions before we got married, but I hadn't realized how deep the issues were with him and his mom. It felt surreal to learn how involved his mother was in our honeymoon plans, something I'd never heard of anyone else going through. This made me feel not just angry, but also like I was in a strange dream. When he started tearing up my passport, I began to have serious doubts about my marriage. Seeing his mom's unsettling smile, I realized I needed to get out fast. This sudden turn gave me clear evidence against both of them. I'm Catherine, 30 years old, and I've been working for five years. Recently, my boyfriend proposed, and I was excited to plan our wedding and honeymoon. Meeting my husband was unexpected. In my career, I'm usually reserved, and aside from a college boyfriend, I hadn't seriously dated anyone since. So, it was a surprise even to me that I got married before many of my colleagues. My husband, a senior employee at my company when I started, supported me through tough tasks. I'd only dated one other person, a classmate, but my husband's maturity, being four years older, made him seem reliable. I was thrilled when he asked me on our first date, and I loved the dolphin figure we bought at the aquarium. He was clear that he wanted a relationship leading to marriage, which gave me security. We had many lovely dates before he proposed, each one bringing us closer to the future I had in mind. At the aquarium where we had our magical first date, I wondered if I could really be this happy. That night was so thrilling I couldn't sleep, and the memory still brings me joy. Riding on that excitement, we decided to visit his parents the next week. But during that visit, my excitement started to fade, and I began to question our marriage. My father-in-law was kind, but my mother-in-law seemed unhappy with me. She even hinted that my fiancé could have found someone better than just an ordinary girl. Her words planted doubts about our future, making me feel uneasy. Still, I thought it was just wedding nerves, so I kept moving forward with our plans, trying to stay positive. One day, while discussing our future together, both my husband and his mother just assumed I would quit my job after we got married. Although I once thought leaving work might be nice, I didn't see it as my only option anymore. I realized that my concerns about our marriage were likely what kept me from making such a big change. Even though my mother-in-law kept suggesting I quit, I decided to keep working at the same company as my husband, ignoring her advice. During wedding planning, we disagreed about when to officially register our marriage. He wanted to do it as soon as possible, and in the end, we followed his choice and registered shortly afterward. The process was simple, but being officially married made me genuinely happy. At first, we agreed on a small, intimate wedding, but as soon as he mentioned this to his mother, she stepped in. The very next day, she called me saying, a small wedding for Henry? You shouldn't make such decisions on your own. The wedding should be big and grand. I'll make sure it's just what Henry wants. Keep your guest list short, just your parents and close friends. Your friends won't add much to the wedding anyway. I felt overwhelmed by her strong opinions about the venue and guest list. It was so frustrating that my future mother-in-law thought she could control every part of our wedding. Her attitude was turning what should have been a happy planning time into a stressful struggle, making it hard for me to enjoy the process. I decided not to argue with my mother-in-law. I thought maybe this was just how weddings were, so I quietly agreed to invite only my parents and close friends, as she insisted. But her interference didn't stop there. She had opinions on everything, the schedule, entertainment, decorations, and even the food. If we followed all her suggestions, we would have gone way over budget. At first, Henry's family had agreed to share the wedding costs, but suddenly, they placed all the financial responsibility on my family. 
This pushed us well beyond what we had planned to spend. I ended up paying for all the extra expenses for the fancy details she wanted, turning what should have been a simple wedding into an extravagant event. To save money, I made some small changes, but when she found out, she scolded me for making the wedding look cheap by not following her plans. After the wedding, I was hoping to get some space from my mother-in-law, but then Henry shocked me with some news. Even though I clearly wanted distance from her, he insisted that we move into her house. Our new apartment, which we had already arranged, was suddenly cancelled without my approval, and all our things were moved to his family's home. I was completely stunned and couldn't believe these decisions were being made without my input. During the whole wedding planning, I had to handle everything alone. When I warned Henry that his mother's expensive demands might cause us to overspend, he ignored me. My stress only grew. We had planned a dream honeymoon overseas, but after all the chaos, I couldn't be excited anymore, especially with the idea of moving in with his mother afterward. Oddly, even though Henry hadn't helped with the wedding, he took charge of booking our honeymoon flights and accommodations. I had hoped for a romantic destination, and even though I had to pay for everything, I was relieved he was finally contributing. But just as the day for our honeymoon came, things took another strange turn. The night before we were supposed to leave for the airport, Henry casually told me something that left me speechless. Catherine, I'm going with my mom instead, he said, as I packed her luggage. I couldn't believe it. What do you mean? This is our honeymoon. Why would your mom come along? We booked for two, flights and hotel. As I tried to understand, Henry made an even stranger statement. I never said I was going on this trip with you, did I? Don't be silly. I'm going with my mom. It's a thank you trip for everything she's done for me. You stay here and clean the house. Before I could respond, Henry started tearing up my passport. I stood there, shocked and speechless, watching him destroy it. Then his mother, already dressed, barged into the room without knocking. Henry, are you ready? She asked excitedly. When Henry saw his mother, his face lit up. Yeah, we're all ready. Finally, we can go on this trip without any problems. They both laughed and I felt sick to my stomach. It was a harsh realization, I was about to marry into what felt like a nightmare. I had been trying to figure out how to get along with my mother-in-law, but this situation was worse than anything I could have imagined. The truth hit me hard, I had made a huge mistake. As they got ready to leave, I finally spoke up. I see now what kind of people you are. But they just laughed it off and walked out together. I felt completely betrayed. I had been so happy thinking Henry was involved in planning our honeymoon, but it turned out to be a setup for him to go with his mother instead. He had arranged everything, even booking the trip under her name, and left me to pay for it all. The betrayal hurt deeply, and I began to see our relationship in a whole new light. I was more angry than sad, trying to process what had happened. What were supposed to be the happiest moments of my life, my wedding and honeymoon, had turned into painful disappointments. At first, I couldn't believe it was real, but as the truth sank in, I knew I had to act quickly. I needed a divorce, and strangely, I had something that could help me. I had started recording moments during the wedding preparations, not just for memories, but to capture everything that happened. At first, I wanted to keep the happy memories, but over time, the recording started to show my mother-in-law's hurtful actions and bullying. There were times I thought about stopping, thinking I'd never need them again. But now, in a twist of fate, those recordings might just. Just days after moving in, I found myself quickly packing up my things. I hadn't unpacked much, so it didn't take long. The thought that my husband and his mother might already be at the airport made me furious, but I pushed the anger aside. I wanted to leave the house with no trace that I had been there, so I cleaned it thoroughly. While cleaning the living room, 
I found something shocking, proof that my husband had been stealing money from his company. In his job overseeing sales, he had been reporting lower earnings and keeping the difference for himself. To my surprise, his mother was involved too. She kept records of the real sales numbers, the money he took, and even the luxury items he bought for her with the stolen funds. I was horrified. For a moment, I thought about trying to smooth things over, especially since I worked at the same company. But then I realized, why should I protect someone who had betrayed me so badly, especially after he chose to take his mother on her honeymoon? With proof of the embezzling in hand, I decided to go straight to the company. Even though they were supposed to be on their honeymoon, my colleagues were surprised to see me at work. They all asked why I wasn't away on my honeymoon. I decided to tell them the truth. I explained that my husband and his mother had taken the trip instead, that he had destroyed my passport, and that I had paid for everything myself. This marked the end of my marriage and showed me the true nature of the people I had trusted. My colleagues, bosses, and supervisors were shocked and upset on my behalf. I appreciated their support and made my way to the executive wing of the company. What they didn't know was that one of the top executives was my uncle. I had never told anyone, including my husband or his mother, about our family connection because I didn't want anyone thinking I got my job because of him. I had worked hard to get the job on my own, and since my uncle wasn't involved in human resources, I asked him to keep our relationship private, which he respected. As a child, my uncle had always treated me with a lot of care, almost like his own daughter. He spoiled me with gifts and trips, even though my parents would sometimes tease me for asking too much. Since joining the company, we had kept things professional, with only a brief moment of personal interaction during orientation. When I walked into his office, his warm smile quickly turned into concern. He could tell something was wrong. Why are you here? Weren't you supposed to be on your honeymoon? My uncle asked. Seeing his caring face, I couldn't hold it together anymore. I broke down and, through my tears, told him everything that had happened. His expression changed to one of anger, something I rarely saw from him. After hearing about my husband's embezzling and seeing the proof, my uncle immediately said he would call a board meeting to deal with the situation. He was supportive and, after discussing what to do at work, he suggested we go out to eat so I could clear my mind for a bit before he drove me home. Even though I had been betrayed, I felt grateful for the kind people in my life. About a week later, when my husband and mother-in-law returned from what was supposed to be our honeymoon, my husband called, furious that I hadn't picked them up from the airport or cleaned the house like he had told me to. He demanded to know where I was. By then, with the support of my uncle and parents, I had already hired a top lawyer, and the divorce was in motion. Without letting him say anything else, I cut him off and firmly said, You two are loud and irritating. I don't want to hear your voice anymore. Why would I pick up someone I'm divorcing? That was the clear end of our relationship. As I decided to move forward, Surrounded by people who truly cared about me, I asked, Why would I follow your orders to clean? He seemed shocked for a moment but quickly started yelling again. Do you think it's okay to talk to me like that? I did you a favor by marrying you. If we divorce, you'll never find anyone else. My mom's furious too. If you come back now and cook for us, I might forgive you. We're tired of foreign food. Make us some traditional meals. His words stunned me, especially after he had betrayed me and chosen to go on the honeymoon with his mother instead of me. That's when I realized the man I thought I knew was never really there. Over the next few days, as I reflected on everything, I met with a lawyer to start the divorce process. Please talk to my lawyer from now on. I said firmly. Divorce? What are you talking about? We're not getting a divorce, he said, sounding shocked. I could hear his mother yelling at me in the background, throwing insults. Well, do whatever you want. By the way, I've informed the company about your embezzling. 
They might be calling you soon. Maybe you should get a lawyer too. Goodbye. I could hear his panic, but I didn't care anymore. He kept calling, but I blocked his number. My uncle, who knew about our honeymoon plans, had already taken action. The company called my husband in to investigate. Based on the evidence I had given, they verified the information and confirmed that he had been stealing money. The amount was a lot. In front of the company's executives, my husband desperately tried to deny it, even trying to blame me for the embezzlement. That's when my uncle stepped in. My niece would never do such a thing. We've confirmed that you and your mother are responsible. You're lucky we haven't called the police yet. Seeing everything fall apart and realizing I had powerful connections, my husband looked completely defeated. That day, I went to the company to return the wedding gifts to my colleagues. Even though my marriage had ended so suddenly, they refused to take them back, insisting they gave them with good intentions. While I was there, my husband approached me, looking desperate. Why didn't you tell me about your family connection? I'm sorry. Truly. Can we start over? Can you ask your uncle to let me stay at the company and make the embezzlement charges go away? I was disgusted. Do you even hear yourself? Are you serious? Divorce is the only way forward now. Think about what you've done and face the consequences. I pushed him away, and one of my colleagues called security. They came and removed him from the building, and he was fired on the spot. As for the embezzlement, the company decided to take legal action against him. When my mother-in-law tried to contact my family, my father-in-law, after talking with me, made sure she stopped. I had always wondered why my father-in-law had seemed so quiet about our marriage, but now I understood. Surrounded by people who truly cared for me, I was finally ready to move on, free from the lies and manipulation that had been part of my marriage. When my husband came back to apologize and admit he was wrong, I realized he hadn't understood the situation at all. He thought his mother was just going on a short trip with her friends and that he would have a peaceful week without her constant demands for shopping and eating out. After seeing all the absurd things my husband and mother-in-law had done, I knew I had to leave. My father-in-law, who was kind and reasonable, supported my decision to go back to my parents' house. He helped me pack, and with few words, I left for my family's home. He was the only person in the house I could trust. I felt like a victim, embarrassed that my honeymoon had been ruined by my mother-in-law. I even started thinking about quitting my job. I thought about quitting my job, but my parents suggested I take a break instead. My uncle also thought staying busy with work might help distract me. After talking to the CEO, they arranged for me to be transferred to a different branch office. The divorce went smoothly. Thanks to a great lawyer, I was surprised to learn that my father-in-law had helped in the process. During our wedding planning, I found out that my husband had very little savings. My in-laws, who weren't wealthy, also didn't have much saved up, especially with my mother-in-law's expensive habits. However, the alimony I received was generous, considering our short marriage. Shockingly, my father-in-law had to sell their family home to cover it. Their home was in a small community, not the city center, where everyone knew each other. The day I was supposed to leave for our honeymoon, I returned to their family home with my luggage. The neighborhood quickly spread rumors, and soon, things were so exaggerated that living there became unbearable. At first, my mother-in-law was proud of our marriage, especially since both my husband and I worked at big companies. It was a status symbol for her, but after all that happened, and with the rumors spreading, she couldn't handle it anymore. My father-in-law probably felt burdened by having to cover for my husband's financial mistakes. While I have no sympathy for my husband or mother-in-law, I do feel sorry for my father-in-law. After my husband was fired and had to pay for the damages, he had a mental breakdown and now lives in a small apartment. My mother-in-law. Seeing her son like this, isolated herself, my father-in-law, fed up with her, even considered divorcing her, 
he didn't want to spend his later years in a troubled marriage. He reached out to me, asking if I could connect him with my lawyer. I asked my uncle for help, and he arranged it for him. I hope my father-in-law can find a way to live the life he deserves. Thanks to my uncle and the company CEO, I was transferred to a new office where I had supportive colleagues and bosses. I'm really grateful to my uncle for being there for me through everything. The only regret I have is missing out on the honeymoon we planned. Once everything calms down, I hope to take a peaceful trip abroad to make up for it.